Hello, my friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Mama Ming on my channel. I share a variety of content related to pregnancy, parenthood, motherhood, and lifestyle videos in this channel. If this is the first time you're here, make sure you subscribe. It will really help me out. In today's video, I want to share with you the best exercises for pregnancy. So I am a yoga teacher. I'm also a certified prenatal yoga teacher. So during my pregnancy, exercises what actually makes a huge difference friends in my entire pregnancy so if you are thinking about being pregnant or if you're pregnant this video may help you out but before I start just want to make sure that check with your doctor before you try out any of the tips that I shared in my personal experience what I shared is not medical advice every time a pregnant person come into my class or practice with me, I always ask this person to ask their OBGYN first to make sure that they can exercise and then we can go ahead and do some of these following tips. All right, let's get started. So when we think about exercise for pregnancy, we think about different goals of different purpose of the exercise during pregnancy. It's either to help you to increase your mood, it's either to help you to increase your cardi cardiovascular health, it's either to help you to prevent gestational diabetes, to prepare your body for birth. So when I think about exercise or when I was pregnant, um, I think about all of these different goals when I choose my different exercise programs. So now I'm going to share what I did when I was pregnant to maintain a healthy pregnancy and also a healthy birth. So the first thing that I did was I took a lot of walk, especially walking outdoors. So walking has three different benefits. First one is to improve your mood. So if you're taking walk outside when you're in the nature um, when you're taking in the sun sunlight when you're just taking a walk see the trees in the sky it's just a mood booster when I was pregnant, I had a lot of mood swings because of the hormones, but every time I felt bad, either I feel morning sickness and nausea, or if I felt like mood swings getting emotional, feeling bad and down, I will go for a walk and it always makes me feel good. So taking walks is so beneficial for your overall mental health. Taking a walk is also beneficial in terms of your um, blood sugar regulation. When I was pregnant, one of my biggest fear is actually the gestational diabetes. I am prone to gestational diabetes for several reasons. First of all, I do carry the um, increased likelihood of diabetes genes. Second of all, before I was pregnant, there was a time where my fasting glucose was higher than normal. I was in close to that pre-diabetic range. I know, I look so skinny, but again, when it comes to diabetes, a lot of it is genetics. I know, life is not fair, right? So when I was pregnant, I took a lot of walk after each meal. So when I was pregnant, I will go for a 20 minute walk after breakfast, a 20 minute walk after lunch, and a 30 minute walk after dinner, religiously, religiously. I was also very lucky, I was pregnant in fall season, so the temperature just went cooler and cooler, and it's easier for me to take walks when it was like not too hot outside. So I avoided summer, I was pregnant from September to May, which is great, it worked down so it really really helps taking a walk after each meal after eating a meal it really helps your body to regulate the blood sugar it really helps your like pre prevent insulin spikes insulin resistance and stuff like that and personally I fix my blood sugar using a combination of diet and exercise and taking walks is one of the key thing to prevent gestational diabetes the third thing about taking a walk is it also helps you to control your weight gain without putting too much stress on your joints without putting too much stress on your cardiovascular health without taking too much stress on your body so i actually don't recommend running during pregnancy for several reasons first of all the bouncing up and downs i had a placenta complication which is placenta previa most people with this condition can't even exercise so I didn't run at all second of all even if you don't have any complications the running sensation it when you're pregnant your joints are getting looser and looser so running may create may make you more likely to injure yourself compared to when you're not pregnant just to go for a run so Walking is a perfect alternative. It's a really good cardio, zone to cardio. Do the brisk walk, walk a little bit faster. You can also walk incline to elevate your heart rate without putting extra pressure on your joints. So the best exercise that I did throughout my entire pregnancy from first trimester to third trimester, 
every single day with no exception is walking i still took walks when i had sinus infection when i was pregnant i still took walks when i had covid during my pregnancy i know but i when i had covid i live in a house and i live in a, like a remote area and i'm not like an urban i don't go into elevators and stuff i when i had covid i just wait until like there's no one on the street i just go out of my house take a walk and then not getting close to anyone so yeah i walking i had no excuse i walked every single day my entire pregnancy and it makes a huge difference so that is one of the best exercise second best exercise that you could do is weight training yes um my midwife slash obgyn um i have a midwife and an ob but they belong to the same hospital midwife told me to do a lot of weight training when it comes to weight training first of all if you never did any weight training before pregnancy maybe it's not a good place to start anything new you probably don't want to do kettlebell swings when you're pregnant if you have no experience with it second of all is when I did the weight training during pregnancy I was using lower weights than usual and my overall a weight training goal is not to build the muscle it's trying to make maintain my bone health and muscle strength so when it comes to weight training, I mainly did a lot of squats with my toes out. It's like sumo squats. It's really helpful. I did some sumo deadlift. Sumo position is when your feet are wider um, to create a little, a lot of the uh, space for your belly. So also another exercise that I did a lot was a lot of lunges and you know you can do a little bicep curls and stuff like that. So nothing too crazy and if you want to do weight training the best bet is to consult with a personal trainer or someone who had experience um, to guide you through what's better for you and what's the moves that are not good for you but weight training was very beneficial for me but i was using low weights i was doing a lot of modifications um instead of like going strong going the kettlebell swings so weight training makes a huge difference in terms of my overall bone health in terms of oh, my overall health of me and also the baby and also i avoided jumping i didn't do any jumping jacks and stuff like that the third exercise that i did was indoor bicycle so there are so many cycling studios in our city and here's the thing is when you cycle in a cycle class when you're taking a cycle class try not to ride to the beat of music the the studio that i go to they write to the beat, beat of the music sometimes the beat of music is 110 per minute 120 per minute that is too fast for when you're pregnant when you're pregnant you want to go slow and heavy you never want to lose control of your hips you want to go a little bit slower and you may go sit down in the you may do the sitting position or you may do the standing like hovering position but you may also need to readjust your bike because in the past you may be contract your belly now you can contract your belly so your positions could be a little bit different from before you're pregnant so again when it comes to cycling try to do slow and heavy instead of fast and sprint slow and power and steady when you have full control use your legs instead of using your hips is what i would say um what's helpful to me so you never want to make your heart rate super 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 high i always have my watch to help me to monitor my heart rate there is no like one thing that you don't want your heart rate to go too high it really depends on your fitness level before and your age so the older you are the more you want to control your heart rate to be below in the lower threshold compared to if you're in your 20s i when I, i'm in my 30s that's why i wanted to keep my heart rate under 150 when you're in your 20s you could go a little bit higher than that but again like ask your doctor so personally i make sure that i don't sprint i just go slow and heavy and just right by myself the fourth thing that i did was yoga i taught yoga classes my entire pregnancy and during my pregnancy is when i got myself certified for prenatal yoga is here i want to make sure that it's safe for me to you know demonstrate certain poses knowing how to modify for myself during yoga so here are some rule of thumbs you never want to do a hot yoga in your first trimester spinal cord development issues and also you 
how yoga may dehydrate you. It has like exposing being exposed to higher temperature during the first trimester is associated correlated with increased chance of miscarriage. It's just certain studies demonstrate that correlations. So in the first trimester, I would say no, no, not absolutely no hot yoga. Second and third trimester, I will also recommend against hot yoga. However, if the yoga room is 90 degrees, not over 100, and you're like hydrating yourself a lot, and you know what you're doing, it's probably not gonna hurt the baby. But again, here are some rule of thumbs. When you're pregnant, when you practice yoga, you never want to do deep twist. You never want to do deep twist. You never want to do back bend, even slightly back bend, not a good idea. Like upper facing dog is a no no bridge is okay but wheel is not okay you also don't want to put pressure into your belly onto the floor you also probably don't want to lay in shavasana lay on your back for over five minutes there are so many things going on about like precautions when it comes to practice yoga during pregnancy yoga absolutely helped me to prepare my body for birth um, when i was pregnant a lot of people when they're pregnant their breath is very short like if they have short breath because you know babies push to the lungs and they're also having other issues but yoga personally helps me with a lot of pregnancy problems it also prepare my body into birth I literally go into different yoga poses to induce the labor to help to reduce a lot of the pain during labor however if you're gonna practice yoga I highly recommend to you go to a prenatal yoga class instead of a regular yoga class you definitely want to go to a yoga teacher who's trained in teaching prenatal yoga at least because then the yoga teacher knows what's going on also if you plan to go to a yoga that's not a prenatal yoga class make sure you talk to the yoga teacher before you're pregnant before you go into the room so there were definitely times when people go into my yoga class and then they did a whole class afterwards they're like oh i'm in my second trimester pregnant i'm like what you should have told me before that i would have told you to modify on a lot of poses but Again, you always want to communicate your pregnancy or current health conditions with your coach or yoga teachers or fitness coach so that they could show you different modifications during class. A prenatal yoga class is very beneficial and doing breath work and meditation during yoga is super beneficial in terms of a lot of things, especially during labor. But yoga is what actually helped me to prepare my body to labor. Let's say I took a prenatal yoga teacher training and I took a lot of the birth class, 200 something, $250. The other one is like $500. I spent like $750 on birthing class and I spent like uh, $500 on a prenatal yoga teacher training. The prenatal yoga teacher training is what actually helped me in how to birth. That is absolutely crazy. So I actually had a bad impression of birthing classes because the ones that I took were absolutely not helpful, but the prenatal yoga teacher training was what actually helped me. So highly recommend yoga is what helped me to prepare my body for birth and to alleviate a lot of the pregnancy symptoms. However, make sure it's a prenatal certified teacher or at least prenatal yoga or at least communicate with your yoga teacher. Second of all, if you're going to do yoga at home, be mindful of don't do deep twists, no back bend, no pressing, putting pressure, and don't lay on your back for more than five minutes. Those are the general rule of thumb. Those are the four pillars of my pregnancy exercises it includes walking every day i did weight training about three to four times a week i taught yoga about six to eight times a week and i with my home practice a little bit um not for too long just 20 minutes 30 minutes slash prenatal yoga but when i teach i also get a little bit of practice especially doing breath work i also did cycle classes at the beginning i did cycle classes three times a week and then i reduce it to once a week but mainly like slow and steady slow and heavy and lastly lastly um prenatal yoga so those are the exercises that i did during my pregnancy and also another thing that you want to avoid is you want to avoid anything that will crunch your lower core Anyway, the rule of thumb is you never want to contract your uterus. You always want to create space for your baby, even from early on, even in the first trimester when you feel like, I don't see my baby, my belly is flat, but your uterus is growing. There are certain yoga positions, there are certain workout positions where you actually contract your lower abs, where it will affect the size and the positions of your uterus. And you probably don't want to do that 
even from the first trimester. So personal, my experience is starting from my first trimester, uh, five weeks pregnant. It was, I think, one week after I found out I was pregnant, I went to a yoga class. It was non-heated. I knew I was doing, and I was like, I could probably still do upper facing dog. I feel a huge pull of my uterus, where my uterus is like, like, like a big cramp and I was so scared and I was like after that I was like I'm not gonna do upper facing dog anymore and later I did ultrasound it's exactly where my uterus is it's towards my right side so that was it my body cueing me telling me oh, don't over stretch here because the uterus is trying to grow here and it's ooh, not feeling helpful and the ligaments are getting loose and stuff and then from my cycle class sometimes in certain positions where you contract your belly and I feel a little cramped here I was like uh oh uh oh uh oh and again, like when you do certain positions, like uterus cramps, and that's when your body is telling you, oh, it's probably not a good idea to do that. Listen to your body. There's so many misinformation on the internet. There's so many things going on. Like they're like, yes, you could. Yes, the thing is, the rule of thumb is, if it feels okay in your body, probably you're not doing too much harm. But at the same time, it's always, there's two things that I believe, it's better to be safe than sorry. Also listen to your body. Everyone's anatomy is different. For me, maybe from early on, I couldn't do upper facing dog. Maybe from a different person, they could. But again, it's not my body. I would rather to be safe. And when I teach prenatal, I would choose not to teach upper facing dog because I felt it in my body. It's always better to be safe right it's always good not to push yourself to the edge when you're pregnant you don't want to test your limit when you're pregnant in my regular fitness journey i love to test my limit but when i was pregnant i don't want to push my limit and third thing is always ask your doctor to see if it's beneficial to do these things Alrighty, that's it for today's video i hope this video is helpful to you as well if you have experience in this field definitely comment down below share your experience share your tips and tricks and check out my other videos before you go thumbs up and subscribe it will really help me out join the fam and i will see you on my next one bye